Hello, hello, welcome to a maker studio. I'm Cheryl. I create over on the Home of My Making Facebook page. So I'm here this morning. I want to show you a simple and easy way to make your own decor pieces. So as you hop on, let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you think of this project. And also, we are going to be giving away a stencil today. So don't forget to tag three friends and share this tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna start with a simple wooden board. This is an 11 by 14. I happen to have gotten this at the Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree is a three and five dollar Dollar Tree plus, but you can find these boards anywhere. Plus a maker studio also has them on their um, website. So here we go. I'm gonna start with some gel stain and English walnut. Love this color. We have a lot of different um, stain colors. Also, all the products that I'm using in this tutorial are up in the description section, so you can um, go and check them out. I happen to have taken that gel stain and put it in a little container. What I did is I mixed it 50-50 with water. Now our gel stain is water-based, so we can do that. The reason why I did it is I wanted it to come out a little bit lighter than um, what uh, it normally comes out. So I'm just gonna take a foam brush, dip it in, and it is gonna be kind of watery, but it's okay. It was always a water-based stain to begin with, um, but it does give a, a lighter coat and that's the color that I'm going for. So I like to use these foam brushes, especially on these square projects so I can just get them into the corners. You could use just a rag and that would work fine. So I just wanna get all the inside of this. And again, if I can't get into the corners, one of the things that I like to use is a Q-tip and I'll just put it into that corner to be able to get the um, corner stained. We'll see if I need to do that if I can't get the sponge brush in there. So what I'm doing, I'm just rubbing this all on here um, making sure it gets into the wood. And then I'm gonna take a lint-free rag and just wipe off any excess. Let me see if I can get that. So see how it doesn't get in the corners. Let's see. You can see how it doesn't get in the corners over here. So what I like to do sometimes is you always have to have Q-tips in your arsenal. I just put a little bit of stain in there and just get into the corners. I do the same thing when I'm painting because sometimes you just can't get those corners with your tool. So I'm gonna take a lint-free rag and just go ahead and just wipe off the exit ex excess. One thing I like about the stain on my projects, you never know what the wood grain is gonna show. And that also gives it a lot of texture instead of just um, painting it opaque so you can't see the stain. So if you guys just hopped on, I'm Cheryl from over on the Home of My Making Facebook page. I'm here on a maker studio this morning showing you how easy it is to make your own decor pieces with our products. So I just took the gel stain in the English walnut and I mixed it 50 50, 50% 50 water, 50% stain. And I did that because I wanted a lighter color. And the good thing is, because it is water-based, you can do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that little excess off, make sure I got all my corners. I did go ahead before I got on here and I did stain the back. So I just need to go ahead and stain these sides. Again, just rub your stain on there and take the excess off with a lint-free rag. It does dry pretty quick too because it is a water-based stain, but for this tutorial, I am gonna hit it with a heating tool just to dry it, but you can actually wait for it to dry to continue to the next process. Let's see, I have two more sides to go and then it's completely covered. 
And that was the look that I wanted on this project. So again, you could make high-end decor pieces with all the products at a maker's studio. This board was actually $3 from the Dollar Tree. You can obviously get different surfaces, different shapes at all your craft stores. Okay, so this is the last section. Let me go ahead and close my container. Get that, and then I'm just gonna gently hit it with a heating tool to dry it so I can continue the next part of the project. So again, if you're new to the page, welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't forget to let us know what you think about this project. And we're going to be giving away the stencil that I'm going to be using. All you have to do is tag three friends in the comments below and share this tutorial. And you will be in the giveaway for this stencil that I'm going to be using. Okay, so like I said, I already done the back, which actually is going to be the front of this project. what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip it over. This side is already dry. Now, let me show you the stencil I'm using today. It screams fall. This is called apple picking. So farmer's market, apple open daily, apple bushels, a really um, pretty apple leaf clump, <laughs> apple tree leaf clump right there. A lot of detail. Also, it has this striping down there, which is a really good addition to this because you don't have to use it in its entirety. You could actually use this stripe on a different project and just use this. You can put the whole thing on this project. I'm not. So if you're new to a Maker Studio stencil, they are a tri-mesh adhesive stencil, which gives them so much detail. You can't get that with a plastic stencil because it doesn't have that mesh in there to give all that detail. So they come in these sleeves with this cardboard backing. Save that because that's where you're going to want to um, store your stencils. Very easy to maintain these stencils as far as them being reusable. That's the great thing about it is it's reusable. So you could use them over and over again. All you have to do is just clean them properly and put them back in their sleeve. So I'm actually going to cut this stripe off. So I'm going to cut it in two pieces. Now what I'm going to do is again, this is an adhesive stencil, so it's on a backing and you're going to peel that backing off. And what I want you to do is always keep that backing. You could even label it so you know which one's the proper one for what stencil. But you always want to keep that because when you clean these stencils, you want to put it back on that backing and then put it back into that sleeve and that'll stabilize it and you could use them over and over again. So what I need to do is just need to kind of measure the center of this board just to get an eyeball of where this is going to go. 11... Okay, so I just want to kind of get a feeling for where the center is going to be of this board. And it's an 11 inch board. So I just need to know where about five and a half is. So I'm going to take this strip and I'm going to put it across here now. I know it's not long enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to start at this end. I'm actually going to start in the center and there's a reason for that. And then I could meet it up. So I'm just going to put that there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some linen one-step paint. It's a really pretty color. It's a beigey linen color. But what I'm going to do is I have some that I put in a little container. I like to transfer my stuff to a little container just because um, when I glop this container up, I could throw it out better than if I had done that to my container that it comes in. So I'm going to take a little bit of this paint. 
put it on a foam brush. Now, once I see that that whole circle has been covered, I just pounce it off. Now, I don't, I want this to be very light and I actually don't want it to be full coverage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pounce this down onto this stencil. I'm trying to be mindful not also to get it off of the stencil. If I do, I can literally, before it dries, just wipe it clean. Now what I'm doing is I'm not hitting the whole entire stencil and I want that effect that it is kind of distressed a little. So you can see that there. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to overlay this and continue it down to the end and do the same exact process. Again, I'm not hitting all of the stencil because I want it to have some negative space where there is not any paint. Again, I'm gonna lift it up so I accomplish it. Now there's a reason why I did it in the center because if it was a little bit offset, this stencil is gonna cover it and I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let me just close this up again. When you're using these stencils and you have product in them, what you need to do right away, right away, get up and go rinse this underwater. You need to get all of that stencil out of all of the product out of the stencil so that it doesn't impede it the next time you go to use it because that is a mesh in there and you don't want it to clog it. So I do have water here that I sit my stencils in while I'm doing my project because I'm on a live. If I wasn't doing this live, I would have went and washed that. And that's what I highly recommend you guys do. Do it automatically, get into the habit, and that's how you would maintain your stencils. You would rub them under water because you could really just use your hand to get that product out of there. And then what you would do is go ahead and lay them sticky side up on a clean cloth, let them air dry. You'll put it back on the backing that it came off of and slide it back into the sleeve. And that's the only care for reusable mesh stencils. I'm gonna hit this with a dryer right now just to get it dry. The One Step Paint only takes about 20 minutes to dry. You don't have to hit it with a dryer, but I am because I need to continue to the next part of this project. So watch how easy. I'm making my own decor pieces. And it's fun to have the bragging rights for it, to know that you did it. If you have a vendor booth or something, these are really easy to make. So if you notice, I didn't complete the whole line. See how it looks kind of splotchy? That's exactly what I wanted. Now, if you wanted it a full look, you would have completed the whole um, graphic in the stencil with the paint. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay this stencil. That's why I needed the board dry and then the paint dry. And now what I'm gonna do is take it off its backing. Again, remember, always save those backings. That's how you store the stencil. And now I'm going to put this over the, I'm trying to make sure it's straight. Put this over that line that I made with the other part of the stencil. I am just trying to see if that is straight, semi-even. So see how that is? So the reason why underneath I stopped it here is because I knew this area was going to cover that instead of having it stop over at the end and the joint line be there. Although I did match it up pretty good, that's one of the reasons why I did that. So you're going to smooth it down, get it adhered to your surface. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the can't never could gel our ink. That is a black color. I'm gonna take our squeegee. We have all different kinds of applicators. And what I like to do is I just put a little bit on at a time. And the reason why I do that is I don't like to actually waste anything. So you can't get it back into the tube after you um, take it out, but it just, keeps me from not putting a lot on at one time. So what I like to do, I start always on the gray area and just squeegee this through there. 
I do add as I go. And again, I did the black over the linen so that it shows. It's going to cover up that stripe where I painted. Again, if you don't want full coverage of the detail, like if I wanted to also make this look like it is distressed a little, I don't have to hit every area. But this particular stencil has the detail in it to give you that look anyway. That's the good thing about the um, mesh part of the stencil is it gives so much detail because it's not like a plastic stencil that is open in that area. So again, don't forget to tag three friends and share this tutorial. You'll be in the giveaway for this apple picking stencil. So isn't this so easy just to create your own decor pieces with a couple of products from a maker studio and your surface of your choice? So now what I'm doing is I'm just looking to see if I have any places that I missed. If I do, just go over it. But for the most part, it's done. These are also washable. So I do put them in my water bath, but I would rinse them under the sink also. So now what I'm going to do is pull up this particular stencil and you will see all the detail in there. over that line. So it's very, very adhesive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back into the water bath, but you guys would go and immediately wash it. Like I said, I use the water bath because I don't want it to dry while I'm doing this tutorial. So let me go ahead and see how pretty that is. I'm going to go ahead and um, hit it with a dryer. to get it all dry. So I could go over the top of it because that was a white color. And it kind of is gonna peek through, which is fine. I kind of like that effect. And I also like the effect that I didn't make that line very apparent. I did have some negative space in there that I was able to make it look like it's worn off. So I'm gonna just do one other thing to this project to make it look a little bit more older than it is since it was a new board. But I need to get this dry first. And what do you guys think? What do you think of the stencil? Doesn't that scream fall? So the next thing I'm gonna do, I am gonna take some of that um, linen paint again. I'm gonna take a chip brush. And the funny thing is this chip brush is pretty old and I like it because it's raggedy. And if you can see it, it's got a lot of wisps in it and I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip it in this linen color again, offload it. And I wanna kind of distress this board. So, and I want to go over even the, the detail of the stencil. So what I'm doing is just dragging it very lightly. And the best thing is to do it kind of in a crosshatch so you don't get the same uh, detail, the same angle of the um, brush strokes, I should say. And you could do this. You could omit this part, but it's going to give it another little dimension and I am doing it over the stencil a lot of times what I do is I do it underneath the stencil before I stencil but in this project I just wanted to go over it so if you can see it it's just giving it a little bit of detail one of the things I like to do too is to exaggerate the edges just because it gives you the shape of the board a little bit better. 
and I'm just touching it along the edge. So see how that's doing that? Just gently dragging it on the edge of this. And that's going to exaggerate it. The shape of the board being a, a rectangle. And you could distress it more than you to your to your liking. But remember, this started as a unfinished wooden board that we just kicked it up a couple of notches. So that's the good thing. You can make it your own. So see how I did that? It kind of makes it not as harsh of a drastic color change between the um, board and the stripe being that linen. So let me know what you think. Again, all these project products that I use are up in the description of this tutorial. So give me some hearts. Let me know what you think of this project. I'm just going to add a little bit more going around. Again, this chip brush is really doing the trick because it's so, um, the bristles are so worn and spread out that it gives me that little fringe effect. So what do you th guys think? Remember, this started out as a simple unfinished wooden board that you can um, kick up a couple of notches, make your own decor, love the stencil. It's, it screams full. You could do it in many different colors. We have a lot of different colors of gel arting. Again, all the supplies are up in the description section. Don't forget, tag three friends and share this tutorial and you will be in the giveaway for this stencil. So thank you for joining me. Come join me over on the Home of My Making page. Let me know what you think of this project and go create.